dogs must be credited for sending the gombe. Me, honey, boo boo, child. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of PCP Pop Culture Psychology. I am your host, Dr. Elmer Superstar. Let's dive right in. How I came up with the concept of PCP was my immense love for pop culture and my fascination with psychology. So I figured, why not go beyond the depths of what the audience sees and really delve into certain characters and situations? While the Balloon Boy hoax did win the Instagram poll to become PCP's debut topic, I decided to go ahead and chronicle Mama June and Honey Boo Boo because I've done the most research on the story. It is current right now. And they were actually a little bit of the reason behind me wanting to create PCP in the first place, not to mention that I can relate to a couple facets of the story. Before I go any further, I want to put out a disclaimer that this is not a tea video, this is not a drama video, this is not a video making any kind of jabs. The purpose of this video is to, from my perspective, shed some light on the realities of the current predicament of the family because it actually is quite tragic and devastating. So please view this with an open mind and an open heart. So Alana Honey Boo Boo Thompson and June Mama June Shannon first came to prominence in January 2012 on TLC's Toddlers and Tiaras, which showed an inside look in the world of child pageantry. I'm June, I'm known as the Coupon Queen. I'm Alana, I'm six, and I'm a beauty queen. Alana immediately stood out for her wacky behavior, drinking go-go juice, which was a combination of Mountain Dew and other energy drinks to get her hyped up on stage, and for her catchphrase, Dollar makes me holla, honey boo boo child. Dollar makes me holla, honey boo boo. <laughs> that was bad. I should not consider a career being an impressionist. <laughs> You could tell that she was a sassy kid and that unlike some other kids that had been showcased in the past, she genuinely wanted to participate in these pageants and she wasn't being pushed towards it. Following their episode, the whole country, if not the world, exploded into Honey Boo Boo mania. June and Alana were on every single talk show that you could think of from Jimmy Fallon to The View. This not only guaranteed them a follow-up appearance on Toddlers and Tiaras, they got their own spinoff show for them and the whole family, called Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. Mama! Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was about the hillbilly antics, and when I say hillbilly, they have proclaimed themselves as rednecks and as hillbillies. So they don't find it offensive, and I actually think it's very brave for them to claim those titles in the face of derision from society and the media. It soon became TLC's highest rated show. And at this point, Little Honey Boo Boo was making more money in a year than actual college graduates. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And this happened in 2014. Mama June and Mike Sugarbear Thompson, Alana's father, went on marriage boot camp reality stars, where it was revealed that Mike had cheated on June with both men and women. Following this, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was canceled due to June's relationship with a fellow prison inmate, Mark McDaniels, that had molested her oldest daughter, Anna Chickadee. June did not want to believe the story, which is actually very sad to hear because up until recently, within the past year, June has always been portrayed as being very loving and protective of her children. A couple years later, June was offered her own show by WeTV entitled Mama June From Not to Hot, which would show her weight loss journey, and this included over $75,000 in surgeries to get her to lose over 300 pounds and getting into a size four. Now, here is where I have a problem with the story the world of reality television can be quite deceptive. I have met several people throughout the years that have either been on reality television or worked in reality television. Things are altered and edited to look a certain way purely for the sake of shock value and effect. I will get into that later with how it applies to June's new show. But I would like to point out that there is a scripted show that you guys should definitely check out. It's called Unreal and it ran for four seasons. First it was on Lifetime, then it was on Hulu and is still currently on Hulu. And it is about a production team behind the scenes of a Bachelor-esque show. And pretty much everything that they've shown on Unreal is very close to how it is in the world of reality television. Let me put it this way. There's very little realness 
and reality television, especially with June claiming to be a size four. Being somebody that has struggled with their weight and has been at a lower weight, I need to reveal that you cannot be a size four at 160 pounds. So that right there is the first lie. In the first season, it seemed like June was doing pretty well, losing weight and adjusting to life as a single mother. It was around this time that Mike got a new girlfriend, Jennifer, whom he would later marry. And reality television definitely kind of delves into tropes and archetypes and things like that. And with this narrative, it came, became the hero and the villain. With June being the hero and Jennifer being the villain. I was hoping like hell you weren't going to be here if I didn't have to look at you. Because you're not but trash. You're not the mother and you're never going to be anything to Alana. I'd just be the mother that you can't be. As far as Jennifer goes, I don't want to spend too much time talking about her because this video is not about her. I think that most of the time she is there for a dramatic effect to get a rise out of June. And I think that she does care about Alana and her well-being. I just don't know how genuine her motives are in the spick of things. Being someone that is a product of divorce, it's definitely kind of challenging when one of your parents starts dating somebody new and it can provide a myriad of emotions. You could be excited, you could be nervous, you could be angry. I will say that it is much better to have your stepmother like you than hate you. June eventually got a boyfriend of her own in season two of From Not to Hot with Gino Doak, a home renovator. He actually seemed like a pretty decent guy at first. He was into June and he had a very close bond with Alana. He bought her a cat when her dog died. He completely remodeled the storage room when her older sister Pumpkin and her fiance Josh turned that into their soon to be born baby's room. And things were going well, except for the fact that June kept pressuring Gino to get married. And he had stated several times that he was content with the way things were with them, but he was also uncomfortable with her status and being in the limelight. Because at this point, June had been given some excellent opportunities. She was in a lingerie pictorial. She got a subscription box with Robert Ward, who is the owner of Planet Hollywood as her business partner. That's incredible. People would kill for things like that. And definitely being on these shows gave both of them opportunities people could only dream of obtaining. Back to the topic. He obviously did not want to get married, but they decided to still be together. Going into the show's third season is when the problems really start to arise. It had a good start with Alana being on Dancing with the Stars, and this was another narrative that made me very uncomfortable. While Alana was on Dancing with the Stars, she happened to gain a very big crush on her dance partner, Tristan, and judging from the clips, like I said, we don't really know what happens off camera. I am basing this solely on what I observed in the episodes. It seemed like this crush was very one-sided. It seemed like Alana was over the moon for Tristan, but Tristan was kind of uncomfortable and not interested in her on that level. I don't talk to Tristan on the daily. What do you mean? Like, tell, tell me, like, you know, like, Tristan doesn't like me. That's not true. I love you. I miss you every day, Tristan. I know. I'm glad I came, though. I did miss you a lot. Look, Tristan. And as recently as a few weeks ago, Alana said that Tristan had more or less stopped talking to her, which is really sad because they did form a close bond and she could use her friend right now. From what it seemed, the storyline for the third season was going to be about Alana getting into stand-up comedy and June and Jennifer battling out who could lose the most weight to get on the cover of Star Magazine. At this point, Jennifer had also gotten a lot of weight loss surgeries. Except for June was beginning to have a downward spiral. She was already going off the rails with her weight in season two. It progressed in season three. A lot of this was exacerbated by Gino's antics. He had started cheating on her. She caught him sexting multiple women and that just became her entire existence. 
Gino and everything in his whereabouts. And this relationship became incredibly toxic and June's health was starting to suffer from it. She broke her tooth on a snack cake and then she started having TIAs, which are mini strokes. And what he was doing to her was just so inexcusable and horrible. Basically what he did when she was sick and he kept telling her he wouldn't go to the hospital with her and he just kept being completely rude and nasty. Do you want to go to the hospital? I told you earlier, I need to go get checked out. You did not, you did not. I told you earlier. I need to go to the doctor. No, I was no, sitting at the hospital. Yes, ma'am. Come here. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. I'm not going to the hospital. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. I'm not going to the hospital. Y'all start leaving it. Turn it right back. No, I did not, baby. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry, baby. No, I'm sorry, baby. No, I'm sorry, baby. I'm glad I had the remedy to cure your time. Put your makeup on this, do your job. Ignore them. She don't need no treatment, bro. There's no reason for this. They're gonna euthanize you like they did yeah. mother? They're gonna run an EKG on our heart and stuff. Probably come back as cold and bland. Who checked? I'm in today. You're looking better already. I'm glad you're here. Go get a check. Whatever. Back here. Whatever. Good job, baby. You're looking up. Let's go to the hospital. Not, 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 not let's. Go to the hospital. Yo, no, seriously, dude. Go to the hospital. I love you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Not have a f stroke to go to the hospital. You mean let's go? No, it don't f let's go. I would have went with you f last week when I said let's go. If you have a stroke, I'll come meet you. I love you. Where are you going? Please shut the f up, man. You guys make me act stupid. Don't follow me. I got to go. All right, f run. Run, bitch. There's a what in the actual f Run, 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 run. What he did was gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of passive aggressive projection from one person to another, making it seem like the other person is to blame and the original person is the hero. When I was researching the story, I was watching another YouTuber's video without a crystal ball and she said that June has addiction transference and I definitely agree. June traded her addiction to food for an addiction to love. And she didn't want to let Gino go. Why she was so desperate to hold on to him is because she was thinking, I finally found a good guy. I have to get him to marry me so he doesn't leave. Because she has had a history of dating older men, of dating abusive men, because she wants to be loved. It became quite apparent that both Gino and June were abusing drugs. And that is the reason why Alana had to go live with her sister, Pumpkin, and Pumpkin's husband, Josh, and their baby girl, Ella. The girls tried to stage an intervention for their mother, who pretty much wanted nothing to do with it. You know that intervention, Mom, sit down. Uh, no. Everybody's trying to get you back healthy, and you have tunnel vision, and the only person you see is Gina. Do you Concerned. not understand that I am staying with my sister? And that's not by choice. I swear to God, Mama, it's not by choice. Okay, it's not? Uh, yes, it is. Because you said... You don't want to say it's that. it's not by choice. They did call in Dr. Ish, who was the marriage counselor on Marriage Boot Camp. Let's talk. Let's if you talk. touch me, Let's I talk. swear to God. <laughs> and they convinced her to go to rehab. She checked out about 12 hours later with Gino. And this is the part of the story that gets really sad. It is incredibly fortunate that Alana had somebody to take her in. She had multiple people to take her in. I personally feel that she, where she is now, she is still currently living with Lauren, Josh, and Ella. I think that's the best place for her because Lauren is also going through this and can relate to her the most. But she had people that could take her in. Her father could have taken her in, her aunt Dodo could have taken her in, her cousin Amber, even their family friend Big Mike would have taken them in. I have been around and seen multiple people on drugs that have lost... <laughs> Sorry. I've known about multiple people that were on drugs that couldn't get off and that lost their kids. And it's really tragic. And it's a really, really great thing that she had somebody for her and didn't have to end up in foster care or something like that because that very easily could have happened. Now, going into the psychological depths of why June kept this relationship, like I said, it was that longing of love, but 
she was always about her children. Even in the second season when she got eye surgery for a detached retina and was staying in North Carolina or South Carolina for recovery, she left early so she could be present at the birth of Pumpkin's daughter. Now that's a mother. That is something a mother does. Not to mention she used to be very charitable and that charity work was seen on Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. Except now the story switched, the card switched. And she abandoned her children for this man that got her addicted on drugs. I have dated a couple guys in the past that have had drug issues, including my most recent relationship. I was lucky enough to be able to walk away, but I had to make that decision for myself. And June does too, even though everybody wants the old June back, and if she comes back, it's never gonna be the same. I can only imagine the, the kind of effect that this is having on both Alana and Lauren. I'm going to start with Alana first. I think that Alana and June both suffer from body dysmorphia. For as long as we've known Honey Boo Boo, she has always had a problem with her weight. And it was really alarming to see a child get up to that size. And I'm sure that this has affected her self-esteem, but at the same time, she has such an enviable confidence when she presents herself, like when she was on Dancing with the Stars and when she did the runway shows. She has such a great confidence and I really wish that she wouldn't doubt herself, or rather, that's how it's portrayed. For Lauren, she's still very young, she's a new mother, and now having to take care of her sister, and they both, both meaning Pumpkin and her husband, Josh. Josh is a quite an interesting character. He just came across as a bit of a moron, but you could tell that as the seasons evolved that he grew as a person and a father. You could tell that fatherhood changed him. They were the best option for Alana. As I previously mentioned, June did abandon her children for Gino, and that also comes from codependency. They are both codependent on each other. She is codependent on him because she believes that this is the greatest love that's ever been told. He is codependent on her because of her celebrity status that he was previously uncomfortable with, that he could now use to his advantage because she had money to get him drugs. Following the intervention, Gino and June were arrested in Alabama for possession of crack cocaine, and Gino was also charged with domestic violence. He was ordered to stay away from June, but somehow she got that charged reverse. It's kind of just been a calamity ever since Gino crashed the Suburban into the house completely drunk. June had to pull him out of the car, and he was pretty much buck naked. They sold the house, I believe, for only around 100000 and sold off all the items individually, again, to get money for drugs. She was living with him in a casino, but now they are currently living in Florida. And for the past month and a half, she has been peddling different weight loss products of the sort, different endorsement deals to get money. Although Gino is claiming that he's clean and he was seen wearing a tank top. He did reveal that the reason why he was wearing long sleeves on Mama June from Not to Hot was because of track marks. The last part I'm going to get into of the story is what Gino said about a year ago on his Instagram live stream. Why was the drug use overlooked daily when I would go to the bathroom a hundred times, come out pouring sweat, and, and and the production company would say, "Oh, is that what it's called now? Uh, using the restroom?" Now, they knew I was in there getting high. They didn't care because nobody else knew. I was still profitable at that time, so nothing was said. The reason why they didn't do anything is because this was a storyline that was still bankable. You know, June finally found love, but now it's rocky, so let's see where it goes. Fight, fight, train wreck. That's pretty much the gist of it. And apparently he was doing drugs the entire second season that he was shown. This is to Think Factory and WeTV. When we were in Vegas, why wasn't the drug use brought up then when you guys found drugs in my hotel room? 
because it was too costly at that time. It would have cost you too much, that's why. So this whole time that people thought that he was a good guy or that he was good for June or the kids, he was actually a danger towards all of them being on drugs. Another thing I wanted to point out, and Leslie Bass and Backwoods Barbie also pointed this out in their videos, was the trailer for the season of Mama June from Not to Hot Family Crisis. It's actually pretty disturbing. Take a look. What's it gonna be like when Mama finally comes home? I absolutely feel that that trailer is exploitative of the situation. Then again, this entire run is exploitative. Alana was only a child when she gained her fame. She had no control over the situation. Her parents signed her up for this. Now, I'm not saying that they signed her up for their own selfish gains. Maybe a little bit. Maybe they did this to provide a better environment for their lower class family. At what price? At what cost? Look at how things are now. A young girl doesn't have her mother. Alana's gonna be 15 years old, and this is a time where she needs her mom. I'm sorry. This was a hard story for me to chronicle. Between knowing people that have lost custody of their children because of their drug addiction, having previously dated somebody on drugs, and the thought of not having a mother, it's devastating. And I really, I wish that things could be different for them. And it's really sad. It's sad because due to this incredibly inconsiderate, vile man, Mama June could end up in prison for a year, if not longer. The girls obviously have very strong feelings about this, but at the end of the day, June is their mother and they want their mother back. I just don't know if things will ever be the same again. Alana and Pumpkin, if you're watching this, Please know that everything I said was not out of malice and was purely said to provide better insights so people could understand you. Remember, you're both very strong and you're going to get through this. This was the first segment of PCP Pop Culture Psychology. I'm Dr. Elmer Superstar. Until next time.